Hello, hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Make sure everything is set up. Happy Monday. There we go. We are live. Okay. Hope everybody had an awesome weekend. We uh, did family photos for our uh, Christmas cards that are going out. And we also picked up our Christmas tree, decorated our Christmas tree, which is really awesome. And watched the greatest Christmas movie of all time, Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation. I'd love to know your favorite Christmas movie. Drop it in the comments. And as you guys are popping on, say hello. Miss Piper, hi Chris, going great, making book sleeves, very cool. Let me know what that favorite Christmas movie is in the comments below, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and get my PowerPoint up and running here. And we're talking about day number two, all about building a strong brand for your school. One of my favorite topics and we're going every day this week, 11.30 a.m. Eastern to 12 p.m. Eastern. So these are short and these are sweet. 30 minutes. Make sure you put it on the calendar. Uh, Rudolph, hello, Miss Coffrin. Elf, Nightmare Before Christmas, Christmas Story. Awesome. I don't know, something about just starting to watch those movies gets you in the holiday mood. White Christmas awesome keep them coming guys all right i'm gonna dive in because i don't have a ton of time so let me share my screen my mouse literally just died like right before i went live so i'm having to like play dj over here going back and forth to my laptop but we will we'll get it done mr lee die hard yes sir i agree with you that is that is most definitely a Christmas movie. All right, guys. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. My mission over these next couple of weeks, give you 12 critical marketing strategies to implement so that you can really hit the ground running in 2024. So we are officially on day two. I'm just doing these on the weekdays. So Monday through Friday, 1130 a.m., to 12 p.m. And we're going to do that all this week, all next week, and then wrapping up on the 18th of December. So today is all about building a strong brand. We're calling it the Branding Blitz, strategically positioning your martial arts school for success. As always, take notes. Please participate and ask questions. Because this is a Facebook Live, there's a slight delay. Um, but get in the, in the comment box, and I'll do my best to try to respond to that. And, to, uh, you know, I did an introduction on Friday with, with who I am, and I'm not going to keep doing an introduction, but what I thought might be cool is if I did like, you know, 12 different facts about Chris. So on Friday, I talked all about the business stuff, right? Pro Pro, Gracie Pack MMA, my school, just got our, our new hoodies in, I'm repping, and, uh, you know, digital marketing consultant for Maya. But Let's kind of just make it a little bit more personal for those of you that might not know me all that well. Uh, I am an only child. So I grew up without any siblings, which meant I had a lot of stuffed animals and I spent a lot of time by myself in my room. Uh, also means that I didn't have to share much. Um, but I am an only child. Some action items that we went over from last session was to audit your traffic sources, right? We talked about the farmer and planting seeds. You got to see how many crops, how many seeds are you planting? So that was one of your homework assignments. For those of you that had that down really well, I also wanted you to check across all of the platforms to see if your NAP, your name, address, and phone number were accurate on all of the different sites um, that your, your business is on. And then if we're going to start having a lot of different traffic sources, we need to be making sure that we're tracking it appropriately and we know what are our lead to appointment, appointment to show, show to close uh, ratios, right? And if you sell paid trials, what are 
you know, the, the trial to close ratio. I also gave you guys a super cool gift, I thought, which were the three scorecards, your recruiting scorecard, uh, which is all about your traffic stats. It's got the formulas built in, gave you the retention scorecard, how to figure out your attrition, and then the revenue scorecard. And uh, inside of those scorecards, it's got, you know, like a, a table of contents, which basically explains uh, what each column is. So today is all about brand, okay? And we've we've laid that solid foundation. We we made sure or we're thinking about the different traffic sources we can have into the funnel. We uh, made sure across all of the platforms, the name, address, and phone number is correct. And now we're we're tracking, okay? And what I want you to do real quick is uh, a quick Google search of what are the strongest or most powerful brands in the world. This is, what populated, right? And I'm sure you can look at every single one of these logos and just looking at the logo, even if the name of the company wasn't in the logo, just looking at the logo itself, that you would recognize it, right? That is an incredibly strong brand, but more importantly, you get a specific feeling. So what I want everybody to do right now is I want you to pick one of these brands, just pick one of them. You could pick McDonald's, you could pick Apple, you could pick Nike. I want you to pick one of the brands and in the comments, I want you to let me know what specific feeling do you get when you see that brand, okay? And I know there's a slight delay, so I'm gonna give you guys a, a couple of seconds to get in the comments because this is really, really powerful. So maybe, you know, you choose Apple and, this is, you know, the feeling or the adjective that comes to mind when I see that brand. So go ahead, get in the comments. Um, Louis Vuitton, royalty, very nice. Apple, leading edge, fun, user-friendly. Mercedes, luxury, awesome. Keep them coming, guys. Pick one of them and put them in the comments. Let me know. What, what is the feeling or what do you think of when you see that logo? Nike, successful shoes. Interesting. Okay. Disney, magical. Very cool. So when I, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Apple fan. So when I see Apple, I think, I think sleek. I think innovative. And when I see Microsoft, I think clunky, right? But there are people that would feel the complete opposite way. Um, that, you know, they they really enjoy using Microsoft. Me, not so much. When I think of Google, I think of all the knowledge at our fingertips. To me, the Nike brand uh, is more than just shoes. To me, it, it's, it just like represents like super cool. Uh, Mercedes, definitely luxurious. Starbucks for me is about consistency because I'm normally a Dunkin' Donuts kind of girl. But Dunkin' Donuts, they're so inconsistent with what their coffee tastes like. Some days it's great. Some days it tastes like burnt beans. But anytime I go to Starbucks, it's consistent. Um, for Tesla, I think of the future, right? So it's interesting because there are a couple of us that, uh, you know, had similar feelings. And then you have opposite feelings. But the brand itself evokes a feeling and your brand is really what should give you differentiation in a competitive uh, market, right? Depending on where you're at, you, you might have a martial arts school directly across the, the street. And I mean, we're not just in competition with martial arts schools. I've got a dance studio right next to me, right? So your brand is what makes you special because all of us teach martial arts classes, right? Your brand should highlight your unique abilities. And it really should embody the culture and community of your school. And it's about how you make people feel, okay? Um, I used to drive a Mercedes. It was uh, like 2013. I got it used, got a, got a great deal on it. And I ended up, taking it to the Tampa Bay Mercedes dealership anytime I needed to get uh, the oil changed. And man, the way that they treat you right when you walk in is, is absolutely luxurious, right? I mean, they've got free snacks, they've got 
uh, you know, free coffees and like fancy coffees. And you sit down and it's this just absolute gorgeous waiting room. Um, you know, there's plugs everywhere if you want to work. There's tables, there's comfy seats, there's a huge TV with uh, HGTV. And you can actually see into the super impeccably clean uh, area where they're working on the cars. You can actually watch them while, uh, you know, they are working on the car. So you can see everything that is happening. And when I traded in my Mercedes for my Corvette, well, a Corvette is a Chevy dealer. And it's a completely di different experience going into the Chevy dealer when it's time to get the oil change than it was going into the Mercedes dealership, even though the Corvette was a lot more expensive than the used Mercedes that I, I got, right? Your brand, it's about how you make people feel. And when I walked into that Mercedes dealership, I felt super special. When I walk into the, the Chevy dealership, not so much. And when you have a really strong brand, you can actually charge more, okay? Now, you know, I've been doing a lot of research on directory sites for a couple of reasons. One, just kind of uh, seeing what, what is out there, but I'm also building a directory site. And, you know, no, I, I'm not trying to knock these particular websites, but I think this shows, th this is just a great example of where a lot of martial arts schools, logos and brands are, are stuck in, where they're stuck uh, in, in the past. So here's an example of a directory site. Uh, here's another example of a directory site. And if you go on these directory sites, you'll see lists of all the martial arts schools that are out there. And you'll be able to see their logo and how they're representing themselves um, online. And most of the logos, and then when you go to the website and you look at the pictures of the school and you're reading about it, they look like they are just so stuck in the past. And I think it's oftentimes because schools haven't really identified who their ideal client is, and they haven't really sat down and said, this is what sets us apart. Because all of us say we teach confidence, discipline, and respect. Everybody says that. That's not what is making you different. And we are setting out to build a, a directory site that looks like it belongs in 2024. So we're really excited about that. So there are seven questions that you can ask yourself to develop your brand. So this is where you need to start taking some notes, okay? And if you have thought about this, but you haven't communicated this to your team, if you haven't communicated this to your students, if this isn't a part of your messaging and in your marketing, well, then you need to take that next step. Because I think as owners, you, you have an idea of what makes you different or special. But if it's not written down in a document, if it's not shared with your team on a consistent basis, if it's not like visual in your school, does it really exist? So question number one is what is your mission and, and what are your and, and and what is your vision? And this comes down to values, down to your beliefs that drive your business, and really asking yourself, what do we want to achieve? Because when we look at your brand and when people are talking about your school, we want those things to be aligned with what our mission is and what our vision is. And I know a lot, of, you know, there are a lot of schools that have their mission statement written down, but might not be visual in the school. I'm always a huge fan of putting core values and mission statements up in the schools. So if that is, isn't something you have done yet, I would encourage your, your uh, I would encourage you to do that, especially we're coming up on holiday breaks. A lot of times during the breaks is a good time to kind of, you know, freshen up the look of the school and, and spruce it up. So you got to have this written down. What is the mission? What is our vision? The second thing that you need to have written down is who is your target audience? We call this your avatar. Who are we trying to reach? Is it kids? Is it families? Is it predominantly adults? Maybe you're more of a BJJ Krav Maga school. Um, is it people that are seeking fitness? Is it people that are seeking self-defense? Is it both? Are you a trying to attract MMA fighters into your gym? Um, I joke all the time and, and say, you know, our ideal client is a stay-at-home mom of two who likes to aimlessly walk 
the aisles of Target, sipping her Starbucks, wearing Lululemon yoga pants with a fresh Manny Penny. Like that is who I want to attract into my school. And you need to have this written down because this is going to help you craft your marketing messages, craft your emails, put on your website so that you can attract those type of people. There's nothing wrong with wanting to attract MMA fighters. I'm, I've got an MMA school, but that is not my target audience. If somebody comes to me and says they want to be an MMA fighter, I'm going to send them down the road to the school that creates UFC fighters. Okay, So this has got to be written down. Okay, And I think for the most part, you, you have a good understanding, but does your staff have a good understanding of this? And does your school look represent that that is who you are trying to attract okay number three is your unique selling proposition what makes us unique and again it's not that you teach confidence discipline and respect okay that is not unique so i wanted to share our uh usps which we developed inside of something called the vision traction organizer, which is just a one page document that literally says like, this is who we are. This is where we're at. And this is where we're going. And this is how we're going to get here. One page document that everybody on the team has. But one of the things that makes us unique is we separate our students by learning developmental stages as well as skill levels. So I know there are a lot of schools that potentially break up their kids' programs into, you know, two different age groups, maybe even more. Uh, we break them up into three different age groups, but we also have skill levels. So beginners are we with beginners, intermediate are with intermediate, advanced are advanced. And not all schools do that, right? So that's an example of our unique selling proposition. And the reason is, is that we can better teach them to their age group and to their skill level by doing that. Another example is that smaller milestones yield longer lasting results. So we're a BJJ school and you see a lot of drop off between white belt and blue belt because it can oftentimes take a year and a half to two years to go from white belt to blue belt. So we did something very uh, not liked in the BJJ community. A lot of people have strong opinions about it, but we created interim belts in between the white belt and the blue belt because we truly believe that these smaller milestones yield longer lasting results. It's my goal to try to keep them martial artists as long as possible. So if I can implement something in between that isn't watering down the blue belt, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to my students if I don't do that, right? So there's an example of like something that makes us unique. And you really need to think about that and put that down on paper and communicate it with your team and also communicate it with your students, okay? Next up is what is your brand personality? Like if your brand were a person, what kind of personality would it have? Are you funny? Are you humorous? You know, are, are you down with putting funny memes on your on your social medias? Are you more traditional? And then you got to ask, is that personality in line with attracting the avatar that we want to bring in? I know that there are a lot of super traditional martial arts schools, right? They want that as a part of their brand. And that's completely okay. Is your marketing message online in line with that, okay? The next one is probably my favorite. And if you don't have this written down, I think it's probably going to be a lot of fun for you to do that. But what is your brand story? What is the story behind your school, right? And- Oftentimes, stories are what helps us to connect emotionally with each other. And this is a great idea for you to share online, whether on your website, under your About Us page. Oftentimes, like About Us pages feel very mechanical and they're not necessarily written from the heart. This would be a great opportunity for you to film videos on this and put it out on your social. Like, what is the story behind your brand? 
Oftentimes we get sick of our own marketing before our market does. And what that means is maybe you've told your brand story before. Maybe you, you know, filmed a video on it. Maybe you did a post. That doesn't mean all of your followers have seen it. And you've got to make sure that you're putting that out there consistently about what is the story behind your school. And that should be a lot of fun for you to uh, for you to marinate on and for you to put out there, okay? Number six, how do you want to be perceived, right? We did that exercise in the beginning of the session today where I pulled up some of the strong brands, Apple, Google, Tesla, Louis Vuitton, Mercedes. And I asked like, how, how, do, how do they make you feel? What adjectives come to mind? So I want, want to ask you the same question. How do you want to be, be perceived? What adjectives do you want people to use when they describe your school? Is it friendly? Is it reliable? Is it professional, fun, accessible, dynamic, passionate, empowering? How do you want to be perceived? And, and this really comes down to, you know, what kind of reputation do we want to build in our community? And then finally, you know, where I think a lot of people immediately go when they think of brand and they think, uh, specifically logo, right? Which a logo is a part of your brand, but what does your visual identity look like? What does the logo look like? What are the color schemes? What fonts are you going to consistently be using when you are putting content online or putting flyers up on the wall? And you know, what's that, what's that tone? And ideally you want that to resonate with your ideal client. Okay. Um, this is an area where there are a lot of schools that can use some help. And, you know, every probably once a month inside of the Century Martial Arts Group, which is one of the biggest, you know, Facebook groups for uh, school owners, somebody asked to, to see a logo. And you'll see a bunch of comments of, uh, you know, people dropping their, their logos. And you're going to see some really great examples of visual identities and some really not so great examples. And if your logo was built a, a really or created a really, really long time ago, it might be time to consider to update it because some of the most strong brands and most famous brands have also evolved and updated their logos as well. Okay. The other thing I want you to consider is that your merchandise should be used as a brand extension. Okay, your merchandise should be leveraging your brand's identity, your uniforms, uh, you know, your t-shirts, your rash guards, your fight shorts, your spats, whatever, whatever merchandise you're you're putting out really should reinforce your brand identity because they serve as a marketing tool. They are conversation starters and they truly help for you to create an even more loyal customer base. And of course, that's one of the only five profit centers that we have in our school. There's only five ways to make money in a martial arts school. Retail is one of them. And we want our merchandise to be an extension of our brand, okay? The other thing that we want to make sure is that the visuals in our school also represent our brand. Um, one of the best ways that you can do this is by creating a branding template in Canva. So here's a screenshot of our branding template. So it's got our, you know, our rates on there, our private lessons, a Google a review, our new student checklist. And we use brand template anytime we are creating flyers so that when we are printing something out, it is in line with the look, the fonts, the brand, and the visual that we are trying to portray. You're not just going to see random flyers that look all different sorts of colors, all different sorts of, uh, you know, templates inside of our facility. And this is something super simple that you can create inside a Canva. And now anytime you want your, uh, you know, staff to create a flyer, you can ensure that it's in line with the look that you are trying to put out. Okay. Um, you see a lot of schools having just some really random flyers all over their um, academy. And, you know, when you walk into like an F45 or you walk into an Orange Theory, you're going to notice that they're using these branded templates as well. Okay. 
Now, one tool that I absolutely love is called 99designs.com. Um, last year, they were actually bought by Vistaprint, but I created the cover of my book, The Best Known Dojo. I've created um, logos through them. We've done t-shirt designs. And if you are feeling like it might be time for you to upgrade your logo and you're looking for a cost-effective way to do it, 99designs is a, is a really, really cool website because what you do is, is you fill out a, a questionnaire of what you're kind of wanting your brand personality to be. Is it more masculine? Is it more feminine? Is it, you know, brighter colors? Is it softer colors? Um, and once you fill that out, you can put this project up where they will have tons of different designers submit different designs to you. And one of my recommendations would be to make the project private. You have an opportunity to allow the designers to see each other's work. And we've done both. And what we found is we get a lot more different types of ideas when you don't let them see what each other are doing, because you have an opportunity to provide feedback. So you can star rate how much you like the design. And if you, you know, there's a design in there that you give five stars and another designer sees it, well, then they're going to try to emulate that type of design versus if you don't do a public campaign like that, they have to kind of, you know, just start from scratch based off of the portfolio of information that you gave them. Um, you can absolutely hire somebody local. You could go through other platforms, but this is one we have been super happy with. Um, like I said, we've done logos, cover of my book. We do t-shirt designs, hoodie designs, hat designs through 99 designs. And it is just an affordable way to get a lot of different options if you are in need of kind of leveling that up. Okay. So these are, here's your action items. Okay. Number one. If you feel like your brand isn't as strong as it could be, I want you to answer the seven questions about brand positioning and authority that we went over. And I'm going to make it super simple for you to do that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you this branding blitz. I'm going to drop it here in the comments here in a second. It's a checklist. So it made it on Canva because um, most of you know how to use Canva. So if you wanted to edit it and move some things around, you absolutely could, but you can just print this out. So I'm going to drop that link here in a second in the comments, but it's going to walk you through the seven questions that we went through. Okay. If you feel like you got the brand on lock, the next action item because I, I need to give you options because we've got lots of different people from you know just different levels and some schools have been open longer some uh, not as long but if you don't have a brand template created inside of canva i highly recommend you do that and you know you can just go to like flyer templates inside of canva you could hire somebody off of fiverr or upwork to create that and you can actually ask them to create it in Canva so that it could be an editable file that you can use in the future. So either action item number one, answer the seven questions and we'll drop the branding blitz checklist in the comments or action item number two, create your brand template in Canva, just like the ones that we have here for Gracie Pack. Okay, so those are your action items. You got a little bit of homework tomorrow is all about social media strategies that are working right now, okay? You do not need to be posting three times a day, seven days a week. We are going to be talking about, you know, kind of what's the, the best lever that you can pull in your school now um, that is going to give you the best return on your, your time and energy in terms of social media strategies. We'll be specifically talking about the Facebook platform. So that will be tomorrow at 1130, same place right in here. And like I said, I'm going to drop the link here uh, in a minute for you guys to access the Brand Blitz checklist. Let me see if there's any questions. If you got any questions, we're right at 12, but let me know in the comments. Ms. Vanderpool, boom, excited for tomorrow. Yes, ma'am, tomorrow at 1130. And number four, what is your brand logo? What was the full statement stated about personality? So question number four, 
What is your brand personality? If your brand were a person, what kind of personality, you know, would it have? Would it be, um, you know, would it be humorous? Would it be more traditional? If your brand was a person, what kind of personality would it have? All right, we got some thank yous. Awesome. All right, guys, tomorrow, all about social media strategies. We will see you then. Miss Coffrin, can you go back to number six? Yes. How do you want to be perceived? What I think of like the adjectives that you want people to use when they are describing you. Are you friendly, professional? Are you luxurious, like the Louis Vuitton brand that you were talking about earlier? How do you want to be perceived? All right, guys. Have a happy Monday. We'll see you back tomorrow at 1130. And I'll drop the link to the uh, Canva template here right when we are done. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.